In this video, I'll be going over the setup of WireGuard on a Synology NAS running DSM 7.2. Along with WireGuard, I'll also go through using Container Manager to set up WireGuard Easy, which is a Docker container that provides a web UI to manage WireGuard. Before getting into the setup of WireGuard and WireGuard Easy, there are a few prerequisite steps that need to be in place. The first is to install Container Manager from the Package Center. We'll be using Container Manager to set up the WireGuard Easy container a little later in the video. Next, we'll want to enable SSH by bringing up Control Panel, select Terminal and SNMP, then enable the SSH service. We'll need to SSH into the Synology NAS to start up the WireGuard service once it's installed. Next, we'll also want to set up DDNS which will provide a consistent host name that can be used in the WireGuard configuration even if the IP address assigned by your ISP changes. To set up DDNS, I'll bring up external access from within control panel, then select DDNS. Here I'll click add and for service provider, I'll select Synology. I'll then enter in a host name I'd like to use, then click test connection to see if the settings are correct. The status came back as normal, so I'll click OK to complete the setup. You'll then want to configure port forwarding through your router, which I've already done, and here is a screenshot of my setup. Basically, the router will forward port 51820 to the corresponding port on my Synology NAS to allow external access to WireGuard. Now we are ready to start setting up WireGuard on our Synology NAS but this requires us to install an additional third-party package developed by Andreas Runfall named Synology WireGuard. The package can either be generated using the instructions I go over in my build your own WireGuard SPK file for your Synology NAS using Docker video, or to simplify the process, I've shared a Google Drive link which provides SPK files built for various DSM versions, including 7.2, which you'll find linked in the description below. What you'll need to do is figure out what SPK file will work on your Synology NAS by visiting this web page, which I've also linked to in the description below. Here you'll want to search for your NAS model and look for the package architecture that it uses. In my case, I'll be setting up a DS220 Plus, so if I search for that specific model, I'll find that the package architecture used is Gemini Lake. Now I'll bring up the Google Drive link that I've shared and download the Gemini Lake SPK file. At this point, I have the WireGuard SPK file I'll be using, so I'll bring up DSM once again and launch the Package Center to install the file. Here I'll select Manual Install. Then from this Upload a Package window, I'll browse for the SPK file that I just downloaded, upload it to my NAS, and click Next. I'll click Agree on this pop-up warning window regarding installing packages from third-party developers. Then I'll uncheck the Run After Installation option and click Done on this Confirm Settings window. Now I'll SSH into the Synology NAS and issue this command to start up WireGuard. Then back in DSM, if I click on the WireGuard package from the Package Center, I can confirm that WireGuard is currently running. Now I'll be able to set up the WireGuard Easy container, which will help in installing and managing WireGuard clients. However, before creating the container, I'll set up a folder that WireGuard Easy will use for persistent data. To set this up, I'll bring up FileStation and create a folder under the Docker folder and name it wg-easy. Now I'll launch Container Manager from the main menu then click on the Project section. Here I'll click Create, enter in a project name, and set the path to the wg-easy folder that I just created. Then for source, I'll select Create Docker Compose YAML and paste in the YAML content needed to set up WireGuard Easy. Look for the YAML content that I used in the description below. Now I'll scroll up to the top of the file and change the wg underscore host entry to the ddns hostname that I set up earlier, and assign a password 
that will be used to access the WireGuard EZ web UI. Under the optional section, if you want to change, for example, the WireGuard port number that will be used, or use a specific DNS name server, you can uncomment any of these options and change the setting to your specific needs. In my case, the default settings work perfectly fine, so I won't enable any of these optional environmental variables. The remaining entries are required settings for WireGuard and WireGuard EZ and don't need to be changed unless you change the port number in the optional section earlier. At this point, I'm all set, so I'll click Next, then Next again on this Web Portal Settings window, and finally click Done to complete the setup and start the project. Now I'll just wait for the WG Easy image to be downloaded and extracted, and the container to be created and started. Once everything is running, you'll see an exit code of zero in the terminal window and a pop-up that says the project was successfully built. Now I'll connect to the WireGuard Easy web UI by bringing up another browser tab, enter in the LAN IP address of my Synology NAS, along with the port number to access the web UI, which was set to 51821 in the Docker Compose YAML file. Once the web UI is up, I'll log in with the password that I set up earlier, which brings me to this Clients window. Here I'll click on New Client and set up a client config that can be used on one of my devices. Once set up, I have the options of either downloading the configuration file or showing a QR code that can be scanned by a mobile device, for example. I'll be setting up my iPhone as a WireGuard client, so I'll click on the Show QR Code link. Then from my iPhone, I'll bring up the WireGuard app that I downloaded from the App Store. Click on the plus sign to add a new WireGuard tunnel. Then select Create from QR Code and scan the QR code that WireGuard Easy generated. I'll give the new tunnel a name and click Save. Now I should be able to toggle on the new tunnel and if the connection between my iPhone and the Synology NAS running WireGuard is established, the WireGuard Easy web UI should display connection details for the client configuration that I'm using. One tip I'll leave you with is if you are using WireGuard on a mobile device, you may want to consider setting up on-demand activation. What this does is activate WireGuard automatically if you are on a cellular network or on an SSID that isn't trusted. This has been working great for me in my setup and hopefully it works for you as well. Also, check out my previous videos covering WireGuard listed here on screen. And if you would like to support my work or hire me for a project that you are working on, check out the links either here on screen or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching.